it is possible that you'll create things or you'll make things or you'll do things in your be it till you see it journey. And you will start to go, hmm, I still love that, but I no longer love doing it this way. And that means you're going to be being it till you see it in the unraveling of whatever that change of your mind is or that decision is. And it also means taking your time. Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Leslie Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world. And the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity. And it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Hi, be it, babe. Welcome to a solo episode. I'm really excited to do this. It's been a really long time. I think we did this in the first year, and then we ended up having so many amazing guests. We haven't done one in a while. I'm sure I don't even remember which number that was. Anyways, one, if you like these solo episodes, let us know. We want to know. And two, I just want to say hi. If it's your first episode, hi, Melissa Logan. <laughs> Welcome to the solo episode of Be a Pod. Normally, we have interviews and recaps and FYFs, and we have hit a 400 episodes, and it's kind of exciting. It's not even kind of exciting. It's freaking exciting. This whole podcast was like a very big experiment on being it till you see it, being someone who I never thought I asked good questions or was a great interviewer, but I was really clear that I wanted to help more women act as if they had the thing already that they want. There is so many people who tell us, well, just it's okay because you're going through this. So you'll just it just wait and just wait your turn. And yeah, that's the age that you're at. So of course you feel that way. Or like there's just so many different things that I feel like hold us back. And then we hold ourselves back and there's, and then there's add perfectionism and this whole idea that imposter syndrome is your thing to figure out and all this stuff. And I just wanted to have a space for you to be inspired regularly by people doing hard things, showing up as themselves and the journey along the way. And it's multifaceted, right? There's so many different ways to figure out how to be it till you see it. So I'm just so grateful that here we are three years since we launched 400 episodes. And so many of you I've gotten able to meet in person and you've told me your favorite quotes and your favorite parts and your favorite interviews. And it means a lot to me when you, when you tell me like episode number, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. I mean, like, it's just so cool. So I just want to say like, part of me is just in total celebration mode. And that's what this episode is. Another part of me is like, it's been a while since I've told you I'm being it till I see it and kind of what's going on, right? With with my business and with where we're going with things and and what I can tell you because when I I'm also um think it's important to give you permission to be in process. And I say this a lot with regards to the OPC community. We're always talking about being in process, being in practice. Applies as a practice. Being until you see it is a practice. It's a muscle and it's not easy and you won't actually ever be perfect at it, but you do get better at being it till you see it. And so um, this year is 2024. Um, we're halfway through <laughs> or more than that when this comes out. And this year started off exactly the way I wanted and then quickly um, revealed everything that I wanted it to be and also things that I didn't want to redo. <laughs> Let me explain. I had I was very determined to go into the year without having too many plans. And then because we didn't have any plans, very quickly things planned themselves. And it made me laugh because it's kind of like when you don't have goals, someone else's goals become your goals. And so I said yes to all these things. So I think it's really important. These are not complaints. But what I discovered is actually it's incredibly important for me to prioritize what I do want in the schedule, which we did do, and then also have a plan of action of like when we can say yes to things and what does that look like? And so already, so that 2025 can be the year of me being it till I see it in other avenues of how I want this business to grow. I have planned the priorities for next year and 
we do have marked out vacations and days off. And it does mean it's very limited for us to say yes to other things. And that is okay. Because I think one of the traps, one of the obstacles, one of the ways to derail being it till you see it is FOMO. That fear of missing out. And so oftentimes we say yes to things that feel familiar and the, or things we've wanted to be invited to. And those things derail things. So nothing this year really derailed the plans. It actually revealed the plans. But I can tell you for a fact what it did derail is my ability to show up in all of my friendships and relationships. And one of my intentions was to be more intentional about friendships in Vegas. And it took me until end of May to meet with one of my dear friends who lives here. We both have just crazy travel schedules. And so I'm not saying I've at all failed at that goal, but I was I was aware that being at I see it and developing relationships with women that I could hang out with in person was challenging based on the things I'd said yes to. And I guess the lesson to be learned is you can't have everything you want, but not all at the same time. So I could have all these incredible events to travel and grow the business, but it also meant that it'd be very difficult for me to have in-person relationships. Now, my friends that don't live here, I've already gotten to see this year. So there's a win there. So I think what I've been really focusing on is not going, oh, I can't do X, Y, and Z, because that is not a way of being it until you see it. Instead, one, celebrating what I can do, and two, making changes in real time to allow for the things I can't do that I want to do and be more intentional. Being it until you see it is intentionality. So here we are, halfway through the year. And I've been reflecting on my goals for this year, reflecting on the intentions I had for this year, how I was going to be it till I saw it this year, and making changes based on what hasn't been going the way I wanted. And celebrating what is teaching me a lot of things about that I want. So something that we'll talk about that's a win that was a be it till you see it for the first several months of this year. You guys, when I took my lashes off, it was not easy for me. And I say that knowing full well that I love how I look. <laughs> And I'm happy that they're off. And I've said on the podcast before that I wasn't happy with the extensions for a long time, but it's also extremely challenging to have no eyelashes. <laughs> to have no eyelashes, I was a shock to my own self. And part of that is because I actually have to look at myself all the time for work. I'm filming all the time. And so I was like, <laughs> it was a very drastic change for me. So I was being until I saw it and like acting like I was a person who knew how to do makeup, which I'm not. <laughs> so I took several lessons and I highly recommend that ladies if you are if your body is changing or as you're aging you're just like oh I don't if you're not liking how you look I highly recommend hiring someone who is an expert at that I am so grateful for all the makeup artists I hired at the very beginning of this year I have more to learn and I'm so grateful for them but they helped me through the process cuz waiting months for your lashes to grow back and by the way they don't grow back cute Mm -mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Finally, now ish, most of it is like, I think my normal lash, what I've had in the past. It took, you know, six months. And, and I know that it can sound so superficial. And I just want to say, it's not. If you're a woman listening to this, it is absolutely okay to want to like how you look. And it is absolutely okay to want to feel beautiful and feel pretty. And when we don't like how we look, it does affect our day. It does affect us being until we see it. Now, there's a very big difference between judging yourself, shaming yourself, and being negative about yourself. That does not fly with me, and that's not be it till you see it. Being until you see it is telling yourself that you're beautiful and doing research and finding people to help you with the things that maybe you are wanting to change. And that is absolutely okay. And I, I like to say that because I think that people can get on their high horse about loving themselves so much that they they don't want to change anything about yourself. It's okay to want to change things about yourself or to want to elevate how you feel or how you look. I have no problems with that. I do have a problem with the judgment, the shame, and the negativity around it. Take action. That is being until you see it. So it is in the intro to this podcast, action brings clarity. It's the antidote to fear. So huge win and will be lash extension free. And I'm having fun doing my makeup every day. I have fun playing with things. I also found a makeup line I like, and I highly recommend doing that because it makes it makes things easier. It makes it easier to show up for yourself. And if what you are wanting to do in this planet requires you to 
feel beautiful, then please do the thing that makes you feel beautiful. Not the thing that makes your friend feel beautiful. Those are different things. That is not being it until you see it. That is being someone else until you see yourself like that. So really, truly own that. And you're going to look different than other people. And that's okay. That's actually really great. It's really fun. So I'm really proud of that. And that was a beat till you see it moment. And here we are. It took less time than I thought. So that was actually a nice, fun surprise. Okay. Another way I've been being until I see it this year, and this has actually been decades in the process, but I will say that in the last the last year, I have not been satisfied with the results in my medical health care. And I've been frustrated with the limitations. And it freaking is expensive to go out of your own pocket for ladies. And that's I can only speak to my experience. So maybe men too, but I've just really struggled. And since 2016, I've really struggled with getting anyone to pay attention to where my hormone levels were. Um, my estrogen and progesterone were fine back in 2016. My testosterone was not. 2017, same thing. Last year, testosterone was not. This year, both progesterone and testosterone were not. And now other things are starting, we're starting to elevate in a not good way. And that is because when the body is stressed out trying to make things freaking happen that are not functioning correctly, it's going to stress out other parts of the body. So I have been trying to advocate for myself and my health because I cannot be the leader that I want to be if I do not feel that I have the energy and stamina that I know my body can have and that I know it can have and know it can do. And something that frustrates me is that when I told other women how I was feeling, I had a couple women in my life who were like, yeah, you should definitely get that checked out. I would look into this. Here are some resources, right? And I had a ton of women go, oh, we're at that age. So get ready. We have to stop telling people that. Yes, I am 41 and I could be at that age. But one thing I found out in getting my test done is that I'm probably not. And I would have been doing my body disservice, just buckling down and suffering through it. What I can say is by getting answers, going to people who really care about women's health, uh, we have them on the podcast. The, their episode will be coming out soon. It's Femgevity. And I will make sure that my team puts my link below if you want to get started sooner than my episode comes out. They have changed my life. So I told them how I'm feeling. I told them what my symptoms are. I told them that I don't feel like myself. And I told them like it's making it really difficult for me to trust myself in meetings with my own team because I don't have the energy. My brain isn't firing at the way that, I, that I'm used to. And it's taking me more time to think about things. I want to be able to handle more stuff. And turns out estrogen was phenomenal. My testosterone and progesterone, while in range, were not serving me. And so by getting someone to pay attention to me, who cares about my health, who has done the research, help me, I can clearly say that like I'm not at that stage in my life right now. And that's okay. It will come. And also... I am now back to performing at the levels that I am used to and I can show up as myself and I can feel the way that I usually feel and I don't feel like a crazy person. And so if you are feeling like a crazy person, don't let someone talk you into something like, oh, that's just how you're supposed to feel. Oh, for my ladies who are on the other side, that you've done the pair, you're on the other side. Just because you're on the other side doesn't mean you have to like manage it. There is more research out every single day from, thank goodness, Roman's health. And so please, please, please advocate for your health. And if you hear someone having struggles with their health, instead of just going, well, that's just the age, you know, you got kids or you're 41 or whatever, tell them how long you've been feeling this way. Have you seen anyone? What did they say? Did you agree with that? Does that answer feel right? Does it feel good? And if the answer is no, then there are other people. That's what second opinions and third opinions are for. And I highly recommend you do that. Okay, so I had uh, during OPC summer camp, which thank goodness I had gotten this support before that happened. That was a marathon that I needed every part of me to be able to function for. And it did. We had Kitty Donnelly from Body Motion Pilates on, and she was talking about for pregnant women to be like listening to their body. And I said, okay, I have a question for you, though. So many people don't listen to their body. So what are they listening? What are they listening for? How do they start to listen when they like (laughs) should have been listening this whole time? And she said, when you find out information, does it create more fear or more curiosity? And I'm going to challenge you with the same thing. And being it till you see it with your health, if people tell you stuff that makes you feel 
just like, I don't like that answer. You're allowed to go get a second opinion. And I feel like if, if we all can start to actually hear the women around us who are saying those things and then provide them not with like, well, that's just how it is. That's how the cookie crumbles. And instead see them and hear them go, wow, how long have you been feeling this way? Have you been able to talk to someone who's a specialist in this? How did the answer feel? Have you gotten a second opinion? We have an episode on how to advocate for yourself in the healthcare industry. And I highly recommend you listen to it it's with um, my old assistant, Lindsay. And then we've had Jessica Vallant on and talking about women's health. And it is very privileged to get second and third opinions, actually. And I do understand that money can be a thing. There are clinics, there are options, there are programs that it might take a little extra research. And I do hope you do that because you are the only person who could do what you do the way that you do it. You are it. And we need you feeling like you can, that your body is able to take you where you want it to go. So what I'm so excited about right now is that I'm on this journey with this company, Femgevity, and um, we're just getting started. And at the time I'm recording this, I've been off oat milk for (laughs) three days. (laughs) And I'm trying to do six to eight weeks ditching some of the foods that I'm actually sensitive to highly and then mildly just to see how I feel. And I have another test. I'm waiting to come back from them. And it's really interesting. Sometimes we're like, I'm doing all the things. I'm eating all the foods. I'm sleeping. I'm exercising. I don't feel awesome. There might be something else. And so please, just to sum this up on the the be it till you see it when it comes to your strength and stamina and longevity. Please advocate for yourself until you get someone who fully trusts that they have your, your destiny, like they're, they're with you. And my doctor with this company, she is like with me and excited and, and looking for things and listening to me. And that is important. So at the very least, make sure you have a doctor who you can talk to and you feel like they're listening to you. They have to, they're supposed to. So make them. Okay. Next up in my be it till you see it journey. Okay, this one is a little, I call it a little more esoteric, but I'm hoping that it will make sense. Being until you see it doesn't mean you don't get to change your mind or you don't get to evolve or you don't get to elevate or stop. I share that because a lot of people sit like, will say, like people who get things done, it's because they have grit or there's a hustle, you know. And I'm not saying you don't have to hustle sometimes. There's like, there's like moments in a business where you're, you're going, but it is possible that you'll create things or you'll make things or you'll do things in your be it till you see it journey. And you will start to go, hmm, I still love that, but I no longer love doing it this way. And that means you're going to be being it till you see it in the unraveling of whatever that change of your mind is or that decision is. And it also means taking your time. Um, sometimes in the be it till you see it aspect, things will just happen quickly because you believe and you're acting as if and the next thing comes. Um, and sometimes it just it's matter, it's a little more patient. There's like more things you have to learn to be the person that's doing the thing that you want to be doing. And especially when you are acknowledging that something that you love doing isn't going the way you love to do it anymore. You get to take some time, explore, and be curious. And I'm still in the curiosity aspect of this. And so being a TC as a detective and weighing options and figuring things out, part of me who is the action taker, like I'm just like, I'm an activator. If you remember the strength finders, I'm just going to do things. Part of me is just like wanting to just make a decision and go with it. But also the leader, business owner, woman that I am wanting to be, that I aspire to be all the time. If I'm being it to see it as her, she is patient. She evaluates. She does things with ease. And she does things through her values. And so that is what I have to use as my rubric as I'm making a decision and changing my mind on something. And so when I have and when I can announce it, I will tell you. Um, And that might be longer than we all want. (laughs) Don't worry. This pod is not going anywhere. Um, (laughs) um, 
But I just wanted to share that because I think it's important to know that you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to take a couple steps forward and go, ooh, this doesn't feel good. You know, it's important. All right. What is coming up? What should you be expecting? Um, well, we're going to keep the pod the way it is right now and have the interviews on Tuesday, recaps on Thursday, FYFs. We really do want to have more guests that will uh, support you in the journey you're going on. I have some perimenopause expert, women hormone experts coming on and just some other amazing topics coming down the pipeline that I'm super excited for you to hear. And what I would just say, my big ask is that you keep sharing it. I know a lot of you have been listeners for a really long time and you shared back then. You need to keep sharing it now because there's some guests that I would love to ask. And I need the podcast to go from top 2% in the world to top 1% in the world. And that comes from your share. So um, do know that. Um, Also, super excited. We are doing two tours this year and I get to see you in person. So there's a summer tour in August and a winter tour in December. And we are running two retreats in a year, which is really a big deal for us. So that is huge and exciting October's Cambodia retreat sold out. And so we are doing the February 2025 retreat and that's filling up very quickly. So I really do hope you take a spot in that if you wanted to come and have a little bit until you see it moment. It's pretty amazing in the workshops we do and the classes that we do. And it's really special. And I'm still doing Elevate next year. In fact, um, end of June is when the applications were open. So I don't know if there's any spots for 2025 left, but if you are interested, feel free to reach out because you know, what's the worst thing, thing I say? No, there's no spots. Um, you never know, right? So that is a really cool thing that I was being it till I saw as far as like, am I going to like doing this? Do I want to be a mentor? What does that mean? What does that mean ongoing? What does that mean years later? How does that work? And proud to say that like every year I get challenged in the best way by those who are in Elevate and it gets sweeter and better. And the grads we've had, they get sweeter and better because it's been percolating them for a really long time. And I'm so proud of them. A lot of them were teaching at summer camp this year and just getting to see them take their knowledge of how the work is, Pi's work is, and then to have their own personality with it. It was beautiful and wonderful. And I'm so proud. So yeah, that's what's going on. So currently I have some things that I'm, as I mentioned, the beginning of this podcast that I've been reflecting on with my goals and like my participation in those. And I am still working on that. So the rest of this year, I'm going to be it till I see it as being better at participating in the relationships that I want to continue to cultivate, not just my marriage. (laughs) That one's actually work, definitely work, but more possible because we live together and we travel together. But in my, in my relationship, my friends, it's something that like Pre-COVID was so easy for me to do, even in living in a busy world where I traveled a lot. Post-COVID, it's harder. It's a very interesting thing. You got used to not seeing people and you start to tell yourself a story about how busy they are. So I am working on being more intentional about that and getting more into a routine around that and sharing with them what's going on because I'm an introvert. So it's so easy for me to be like, oh, it's amazing. (laughs) Um, But I want deep truly wonderful friendships and I have them. And so my goal is to take them to the, even the next level of just really phenomenal, true, true sisterhood friendships that of women I love to lean on and I admire in how they live their life. And so I'm super excited to see how that goes. And that is my be it till I see it project for the rest of this year. Um, work-wise, you heard what's going on and patience and ease is the is really you know the be it till i see it there because those two things don't come easy for me i don't have patience and i don't really i'm not like ease isn't something i would put under one like people think of leslie logan and they think of ease no (laughs) no but i'm really trying that and it has been serving me well so i'm going to keep leaning into that all right loves i hope this was a helpful episode for you i hope that like hearing like my thought process on some things might give you permission to have your own thought process around some things And if you like the solo episodes and you have special areas you want us to hear us talk more as as a solo, a topic, an area, you know you're allowed to send questions in for the recaps. But if you're wanting to hear more about my health journey or my plies journey or anything, or if Brad, you want to hear more about a journey part of his life, we want to share that with you. That's what this podcast is all about because what got us here is this process of going through those experiences, some good and 
and some you would label bad, but really a setup for some good. We want to share that with you because if it's going to help you, we want you to hear it. So make sure you send them into the Be It Pod so we can answer that and take a moment to really reflect on like, who is it that you want to be at the end of this year? And then how can you act as if you're that person right now? That's the Be It Till You See It. That's it right there. Have an amazing day. And until next time, you be it till you see it. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of the Bloom Podcast Network. If you want to leave us a message or a question that we might read on another episode, you can text us at plus one three one zero nine zero five 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 three four or send a DM on Instagram at Be It Pod. It's written, filmed, and recorded by your hosts, Leslie Logan and me, Brad Crowell. It is transcribed, produced, and edited by the epic team at Desenio.co. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music and our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chofi. Special thanks to Melissa Solomon for creating our visuals. Also to Angelina Herico for adding all of our content to our website. And finally, to Meredith Root for keeping us all on point and on time.